Welcome to another video from the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association. This is another of our photo analyses and hopefully you've seen what we're doing with these now. We pick a photo, we spend some time looking at the machine guns in it but also the context in which those machine guns are being presented to us and um, you know just try and explain a little bit more in depth of what we're looking at. Uh, normally we would be proceeding it with a look this is where we got the photo from um, normally either the Imperial War Museum, National Army Museum, or one of those collections. Uh, but in this case, we're not doing that. Uh, not because we uh, don't know where it's from, but because it's one that we have in the archive here, one we recently acquired back in November 2021. And it's one that, so we've purchased this. Uh, we generally like to get hold of these interwar, so between the Great War and the Second World War. Um, these sort of group shots of Vickers machine gun companies or platoons, partly because they tell a different part of the history of the Vickers when it is serving with every single infantry battalion or cavalry regiment. Because the machine gun corps was disbanded in 1922, the guns went back to the infantry battalions as machine gun companies or perhaps into the cavalry regiments as machine gun squadrons and they stayed there until they were con concentrated again into machine gun battalions at, just before the Second World War or just at the start of the Second World War. So these are a really rich picture of how the Vickers machine gun was um, in use around the world, not only by the infantry and the cavalry, but also the Royal Tank Corps were using it quite extensively on the medium and light tanks. It was the main armament on many tanks in the armoured fighting vehicle variant, and the Royal Air Force were using them on many of the planes as well, uh, firing between the propellers for interrupted or synchronised guns, and for uh, observer guns and things like that too, and even mounted in the wings uh, later later on. So, you know, the, the Vickers was everywhere at this point. This photo is uh, the Vickers serving in India with the Gloucestershire Regiment. The description uh, the, that was given to us at purchase is 1928 with the Gloucestershire Regiment. Now that would pin it down to uh, the 2nd Battalion probably, as the 2nd Battalion had been serving in India right up until 1928 and then they came home when the 1st Battalion then went out, but it went to Egypt first. Uh, for a few years or so it went overseas went to Egypt so it didn't go over to India um, so it's likely that this group shot is perhaps just before they come home in 1928 what's really interesting about it is some of the information some, some of the guns and how they're presented um, and part of the second battalion Gloucestershire regiment story actually goes to identify now the main thing that stands out is this this if we zoom in a bit is a Bergman um, MG 15 NA, a light machine gun from the First World War, and a German light machine gun from the Great War. Why is it with the Gloucestershire Regiment in 1928? Now, there was a British trial of this that's covered in the Small Arms Committee minutes in 1919. It didn't go anywhere, so why are we? Why that wouldn't explain it? There were some Bergman machine gun trials in the 1930s, but they're too late. And they're actually, um, oh sorry, that was the Solitern machine gun. So it doesn't relate to any sort of foreign trial at that point. It would seem that this relates to the service from which they've just returned. So in 1927, they were sent to Shanghai, the international cantonment that was there. Um, you can go and read about the history of Shanghai. It appears at a few points through 20th century history. But basically, British troops were sent to protect British interests there, alongside lots of other nations, many European or imperial nations had troops there as well and they had their own interests and British troops were sent there and the 2nd Battalion Gloucestershire's you know, these th th this group of individuals were sent there it would appear that Chinese warlords had acquired these machine guns possibly as a slightly different variant an M1910 I think it is again this is according to Wikipedia um, thankfully Matt Moss at Historical Firearms helped identify the gun for us but we've, we've just relied a little bit on Wikipedia here. So some of the information may be a bit spurious, but um, it was referenced into an Osprey book and they're often not the best sources either, but you know, it it, it is what it is. Um, it would seem that Chinese warlords had purchased these um, and 
therefore that would make sense so the reason they were sent to the cantonment uh, in shanghai was because of chinese warring factions at the time so maybe they picked that gun up there as a trophy um, and it's come back with them it's with the machine gun platoon here uh, which you know, we can see their vickers you know, one two three four so you know, it's the platoon um, it's about the right number of men for a platoon as well they would have been um, and one of the photos that appeared alongside this for sale and, and we purchased and we may look at in the future was um, of the platoon set up in pack saddlery with their indian porters and uh, and, and the mule, muleteers um, you know around them but so yeah, they've got the platoons worth of guns there. They've got one Bar and Stroud rangefinder in the middle, and it's you know it's there on its short stand infantry. That's the quite small um, inf infantry strand that would be replaced in the Second World War. They've obviously won a bit of silverware over there as well at the same time. Don't know what for. Perhaps a look into the Gloucestershire Regiment's um, history would tell us. But they're wearing their service dress or khaki drill. So they're all in the khaki drill there with shorts, um, you know, short shorts and then uh, uh, putties, you know, done up to the up to the leg there. Doesn't seem they've got any particular embellishments. Um, it looks like the other ranks are all wearing um, you know, khaki drill and shorts, but then the officers are wearing their ser or khaki drill service dress. Uh, the ranks that they've got are black on khaki um, or black on yellow possibly i'm not sure if the, um, the second battalion gloucestershire regiment had any particular colored insignia but it looks like above that they might i say might um it might be that their uh machine gun skill at arms badges are being worn above the rank or that might be a color sergeant or staff sergeant it just looks a little bit too big to just be a simple crown where it's certainly on a backing so maybe it maybe it is um you're certainly wearing the sash there as well um any other so yeah we can just see so he's a corporal and he's got something above his um above his insignia so that definitely isn't a crown you know he's not a corporal a horse or anything like that a cavalry um designation he's uh, or household cavalry uh, so that will be his machine gun skill at arms badge being worn above his corporal chevrons uh, you can see how they're just slightly coming off that's probably because they're on poppers uh, make laundering the uniforms nice and easy on this chap here you can see that he's wearing his 1914-18 medals as well with a 1914 or 1914-15 star which is quite nice can't see what rank he is but the, he's possibly a lance corporal or a corporal we just can't see his sleeves there he might be a private um actually uh so yeah quite possibly lots of them have got long service good conduct chevrons um on there as well which is quite nice to see um again all uh all um just uh pop it on um we can just see the mg skill at arms badge being worn in the background there um what else? you can see the sphinx uh collar badge there being worn by the other ranks and then the officers i noticed let's go back there have got a much bigger um almost like full cap badge with with laurels uh, below the sphinx as well so the cap badge of the gloucestershire regiment is very similar to to, to the um to the collar badge there so sphinx in, in laurels uh surmounted by crown anything else on the uniforms that you know remember we're not great on uniforms so if you spot something mention it in the comments and we'll try and uh, incorporate that into our knowledge in the future we are quite good on moustaches look at that moustache super stuff um is he the only guy there with it or he's the only guy in that picture with a moustache but he's looked after it well he's got it nice and waxed um certainly not you know amongst the other rank amongst the privates not many moustaches uh many amongst the not many amongst the ncos either um and then we've, we've got some other medals here that aren't uh, maybe that is just warren victory medal for for the great war quite possibly just the two um yeah, a few moustaches on the senior NCOs and, and on the officers. Oh, just one on the seat, actually. Yeah, so very few moustaches for an interwar photo. Um, let's take a look at the guns a little bit more, though. You can just see his watch poking out amongst there. That was quite interesting. Um, so we've got the guns are numbered, so it's quite nice. We've got number one 
on the end there. See it? There, on the end of the end of the guns. Um, we've got two, gun number two. We've then got gun number four, which actually looks reversed. That's interesting. Um, and gun number three down the other end here. Yeah, and the tripods have got their numbers corresponding as well. So, where's one? Look. Um, this is just a practice that you, you don't see one, once a start, yeah, once war starts, and you don't see it very often at all. But it does mean that the guns are being looked after by the same same people all the time. Uh, this number four gun. Um, let's start with this one. What can we tell you about it? Number eight belt box. Um, maybe a number nine actually with this extra reinforcing rib below there. Now that's interesting because uh, we have quite a lot of number nines in the collection that we know to have come from India and Nepal. I think they were slightly more, uh, well, we know they were more robust, but possibly they were more robust for being carried around on pack saddlery. Um, the, we, we, we acquired a set of Indian pack saddlery for the Vickers um or the the ammunition carriers for that and that contained four number nine ammunition boxes they all came with it so that that's quite interesting to see it there you'll also see that it has its hose um you know the steam the steam tube and it's going into a bag they're not using a can one of the reasons for that is the bags are a lot easier to carry when being moved with pack saddlery as well um the gun is a uh, fluted barrel casing it has a barrel casing cover on it but that's full length and that's likely to be leather we see leather barrel casing covers appear quite a lot in in with indian troops and we can see that there's a single arch on the top cover there so it's certainly a later later war production gun and you can see the tape uh, the the feed um tag of the ammunition belt carrying out there um, standard mark 4 tripod that has the direction dial plate fitted the mark 2 direction dial plate fitted there so what can we tell you about gun number two probably not much different um flute barrel casing gun number two number nine ammunition box there as well um looks exactly the same otherwise there's the possibility that you can just see some additional arches in the top cover there so maybe it's a five arch top cover which would put it much earlier in the war um we'll ignore the bergman spoken about that enough what about gun number one? You can see the cork hanging down here um, from, and it does it. Oh, it does. You can just see the steam tube hanging down there, um, which is nice. But no, again, number nine ammunition box. Um, and they've all, yeah, so they've all got these number nine ammunition boxes. Um, and they've all got the barrel casing covers that I believe are leather covers. They don't look the same as the web cover um which i think is introduced later than this anyway so um so yeah leather leather barrel casing covers um so yeah so the vickers are quite standard what other accessories have we got here i talked about the um the range finder the bar and stroud number 12 might be a number two um bar, but it's a bar and stroud there and we also probably a number 12 i think they were changed but we also have here the director that is the number four director uh, used for indirect fire um fire control uh, it's, you can you know so it's used by the platoon commander um to control the guns work out the angle of sight and everything that then get laid on the guns using the clinometer and bar foresight because the dial sight hasn't been introduced at this point so yeah really interesting sort of uh, set of um set of guns there in use for 2nd Battalion, the Gloucester Regiment. One thing I didn't talk about is the commanding officer there. So the captain um, seems to have quite an array of medals. Certainly he's got his um, 1914-15 star, uh, probably the war and victory. But that leaves, looks like the military cross there. And I believe that's um, the military class of the OBE. Might be a DSO. Um, somebody can correct me on that quite happily. Um, but then something on the far end as well, which could be a service medal or campaign medal, maybe a 1919 um, Afghanistan or India service medal as well. So, um, yeah, he's certainly quite an experienced individual. Well, I think it's a little bit remarkable that we we haven't, you know, this shows you sort of how the army underwent quite a radical radical change after the the Great War and all these younger individuals don't have their um have war medals or the majority of them 
don't have war medals i think we've got a campaign medal there alongside the war and victory medal but other than that um yeah very few and far between the medals there so yes there we go uh 1928 machine guns with the second battalion gloucestershire regiment purchased thanks to patrons uh so please do support us at www.vickersmg oh that's the website www.patreon.com forward slash vickersmg and head over to www.vickersmg.org.uk uh, for more information about this we're going to add this to the gloucestershire regiment page uh, that we have there and you, you know we will gradually add more and more information as we uh, obtain it Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.